keep in mind this garden is only four and a half months old. It's just in its infancy and already you can see a lot of lushness and greenness that has come. Even with the incredible short growing season, we've gotten some good food, we've gotten some good ground cover on the soil going into winter that'll feed the soil next year. As this garden develops, you'll start to see an overstory of the fruit trees growing in, producing valuable crops, as well as providing shade and protection, keeping that humidity in the ground, condensing any humidity that's coming through in the wind, and then medicinal herbs are really gonna be our crop here. That's our unfair advantage to cultivate. So imagine a landscape within this crater garden, a nice overstory of trees, keeping all that humidity and warmth in, sheltering it in the summer, and then an understory of medicinal plants everywhere. All sorts of different medicines so that people can come to the center for a retreat, they can relax, get away from technology, get away from their normal day-to-day -day stresses, reconnect with nature, heal themselves in nature, and begin to connect with the earth in a, in a meaningful way. It was a short growing season. Um, the last frost was June 20th, and the first frost was around the 20th of August. So we're talking basically 60 frost-free days, an extremely grow short growing season, but you can still see there's been a lot of productivity um, within the garden. All sorts of kale is still available. You can see radishes and turnips have gone to seed. You've even got some more sensitive uh, oak leaf lettuce, even though we're now almost a month since the first frost. So here we've got a really nice spillway coming down. Uh, you can see these rocks really provide the anchoring surface for the water to run down. Also, as the water runs through all these nooks and crannies, that'll add a lot of oxygen to the water. Basically, whenever you can hear water running, it's being actively oxygenated just by that vortexing and spiraling that it'll do. Um, you can see in, in flatter sections like this, you don't get nearly as much erosive potential, but in steeper sections like up here, it's really nice to have your spillway anchored with some big boulders because this is where you're really gonna have the erosive potential. So here you can see all the sediment that's coming off of that roadway. This is that decomposed granite. It, it makes a pretty good road base, but it's worthless as a growing medium. We don't mind the silts and the clays going down into the crater garden, but we do not want to be slowly filling it up with sand from the roadway. Um, so that's why these sediment traps are in place. The stones you can see are embedded into the hillside. Uh, basically three quarters of the surface of the stone is buried, so very similar to how you do a passive, passive solar house design. You have your collection surface that really traps the heat during the day, and then your insulative earth all around it so that that heat radiates throughout the earth, warming it, making a nice microclimate around the stone. You'll also get more condensation on these surfaces because of the temperature differences. Uh, so you get not only a warm microclimate, immediately around the boulders, but you also get a wetter microclimate. Squash is a very tricky crop to grow in essentially 60 frost-free days, um, but around the stones they get a nice benefit. And so you can see the plants have died, but they did pr produce some edible squash if we had gotten it in time. Here's the first patch of, of medicinal plants that have been uh, inoculated, for lack of a better term, in the crater garden. These are things that will largely spread themselves. You can see they've already set seed. Uh, and in such a harsh climate, we really want to cultivate our unfair advantage. But so all of the temperature swinging, the extreme continental climate, getting up to 90 degrees on a sunny day and then cooling all the way down to, to 40s, um, even some summer nights, really makes for some potent medicines. And so that will be a focus within the Crater Garden. So you can see, I mean, everywhere we planted a cover crop essentially of turnips, radishes. So there's a lot of food value that's also improving the soil. Most of this will never get harvested. It'll become insect food, animal food, or just food for the soil web. Um, so it's a really valuable crop. It's a nice food security and it's constantly enriching the soil. Uh, we're also trapping all the water. That's the most important resource up here. So like I mentioned before, you've got the sediment traps going down the spillways into a water feature in the bottom, storing that water, spreading it out, using it as many times as possible within the landscape. And the sun, we're catching that sun, storing it since it's not being blown. We're not losing that heat. We're actually able to keep and store that heat throughout the day in these great large boulders in the water body in the bottom 
and then also in the soil and in the life. Um, and I'm not ending strong right now. <laughs> For more videos about crater gardens, water restoration, and permaculture, visit us at elementalecosystems.com.